There's an old tall tale called the split dog. I've heard it all my life and I never paid much attention to it until I started twisting balloons and then I saw that the balloon would make a perfect prop for this story. Yeah, now, let me get you to sing along with me for just a second. Gonna start off with a little song called I had a dog and his name was Blue. It goes like this. I had a dog and his name was Blue. I had a dog and his name was Blue. I had a dog and his name was Blue. I bet you five dollars he's a good dog too. Here, Blue, you good dog. You try that with me. Here, Blue, you good dog. You. Well, I shouldered my gun and I tooted my horn. Gonna catch a possum in the new ground corn. Old Blue Bark and I went to see. He cornered a possum in a cinnamon tree. Here, Blue, you good dog, you. Here, Blue, you good dog, you. Well, now, old Daniel Boone had a dog named Blue. And he was a good sniffer. He could stick his nose down on the ground here and carry and he could smell a raccoon over in Nashville. Well, one day, they were running across a field of tall grass, and old Blue, he was leaping high so he could see where he was going. And one time, he leapt up way up high into the air, and when he came down, there was an old sawmill blade hidden there in the grass. He came down right on that sawmill blade, <laughs> cut him right in two. Front end slid off from the back end just like that. But Daniel Boone was always prepared. He had a little baggie in his pocket with super glue in it. He took some out, he slapped some on the front end, he slapped some on the back end, and then he held them together. Count with me to five. One, two, three, four, five. Blue was all back together again. He barely missed a heartbeat. He blinked his eyes a couple of times. Whoop, whoop. He barked, he was ready to go. Well, he was almost ready to go. You see, there was one small mistake that Daniel made. He was in such a hurry to get him back together again that, well, you tell me if you know what he did that kind of caused the problem. He put him to, what did he do? He put his tail on. He put his tail on upside down. Oh my God, you're thinking that poor hunting dog, aren't you? That's what you're thinking, aren't you? Go ahead and admit it. You're thinking, that dog ain't gonna hunt no more possum, aren't you? Say that, that dog ain't gonna hunt no more possum. Well, you're wrong. Because you see, old Blue, he was a clever dog, and he was very, very persevering. He learned to run on his front legs. He just watched old Daniel, and he copied him. He'd run alongside old Daniel, but he had one advantage. When his front legs got tired, why? <laughs> the banjo came to this country from Africa. When black people came to this country, they brought they brought a little banjo with them. There are still in Africa, there's about 60 different instruments that resemble the banjo, that have a round head with a skin over it usually, and a neck with some strings on it. Mm -hmm. But now the banjo is used a lot by all kinds of people who like to play mountain music and bluegrass. Now here's an old mountain song, and it's real easy to sing. I wish I was a mole in the ground. Sing it again. Oh, I wish I was a mole in the ground. Oh, you sing great vibes of mole in the ground. I'd root that mountain down. And I wish I was a mole in the ground. Now, the thing about these old songs is a lot of them were made up by just ordinary people like you and me and your teachers and your mommy and poppy and your grandma and grandpa. So I thought, it's always fun to see if we can make up a verse to this song. All you need is an animal and a place that that animal is. Maybe what it does. Who's got an idea for an animal? Okay? Ooh. How about, yeah, I wish I was a lion in the den. 
If I was a lion in the den, hmm, what would I do? What would I do if I was a lion in the den? I'll hunt for food. I'll bring a zebra in. Oh. I what? I bring a zebra in. Bring a zebra <laughs> in. Well, the lion's got to eat, and that lion, he's got a good sense of rhyme. Let's do that one. I say go with that one. I wish I was a lion in the den. just get some saying now he was a god but he couldn't even he couldn't get down there but he thought some of the sea creatures could so he called them all together and he said mm, mm, mm. I am getting ready to create some land and I need somebody one of you to go down to the bottom of the ocean and bring me back some sand it'll be a long and dangerous trip who would like to go well, Hant Kai first picked the sea snail because the sea snail said he could bring the sand back in his shell. But the sea snail went down a little ways. He went down a little ways and then he got past the other animals and he saw the great expanse of open water. He got scared. He scooted right back up. He went to a coral reef and into a cave because he was ashamed to go back. So he picked the triggerfish next because the triggerfish said he could keep the sand in his strong mouth. But he hadn't gone very far before he saw some juicy sea urchin. Nobody was coming back. So he said to Mosni, he said, Mosni, could you go down? He said, go on down to the bottom of the sea and bring the sand on back to me. He said, go, Mosny, go. So Mosny thought, well, I'll go down and I will sing a little song to make me feel brave and strong when I go. And so that's what he did. He made up a song, and the song went like this. Go, Mosny, go. Go, Mosny, go. Go on down to the bottom of the sea. Bring the sands on back to me. Go, Mosny, go. So that is the shell of the turtle. And now I'm going to make it his flippers, okay? Here comes one front and back flipper. There's one. And tie it around. And let's give him a little head, okay? All right. I need your help. Can you sing to him? You ready? Go, Mosley, go. Go, Mosley, go. Go on down to the bottom of the sea. Bring the sand on back to me. Go, Mosley, go. And finally, he got on down to the sand at the bottom of the sea. He got there and finally he rested. And then he picked up some sand and he put it in his flippers and held on to it and up he went. Well, it was getting late in the day, and Han Kai and the creatures figured he wasn't coming back just like the others. But suddenly, out of the water, boop, popped Mosny's head. Han Kai came over, and he put his arm around Mosny. He said, good job, Mosny. Well done. But Mosny looked kind of sad. He said, Han Kai, I'm so sorry. When I went down there, I took plenty of sand on back, but as I swam, Hold almost all the sand out of my flippers. I've only got a few grains. That's okay, Mosley said Han Kai. With those few grains, I can make more. And so he took those grains and he spread them out. And those grains of sand turned into a golden beach. And then the golden beach grew to a great big desert and plants began to grow and animals came. But the first animal that was allowed to walk on the land was Mosny, the 
a sea turtle. You look at that bottom picture, you see all those people holding on to that rope? Looks kind of like a tug of war at Field Day, right? That's how they got those big sails up in the ship. They pulled on those ropes. Now they pulled all together, and I want you to try this with me, okay? All of you kids and adults who want to do it, everybody stand up. We're going to pretend we're at field day for a second, okay? So they have a word in which they would all pull at the same time, and that word is Joe, okay? So you guys get ready, and when I say the word Joe, you're all going to pull like we're pulling on that rope to get the sail up, okay? You ready? When I was a little boy, my mammy always told me to be way, haul away, and we'll haul away, Joe. If I did kiss the girls, my lips would soon grow moldy to be way, haul away, and it's haul away, Joe. Way, haul away, and we'll haul from better weather, and it's way, haul away, and we'll haul away, Joe. Way, haul away, and we'll haul away. became a pirate. We'll start out with some funny pirate stories. How many of you have read that book? Oh, wow. Woo, that's a very popular one. Yeah, it sure is. Let's see. Well, I'm going to make a little pirate sword here. And if you like this, you can get one afterwards. Yep, we'll make the handle first. are interesting. Kids love to hear stories about pirates, but of course they're about make-believe pirates, not the way pirates really are. But that's okay, because one of the main things we do with reading, and you guys probably study this in school, they ask you, what are the three purposes of reading? Is it for entertainment, or is it to teach, or is it to persuade? Well, those funny stories are just written to entertain. They're not really meant to teach or to persuade you or anything. Just to entertain you. And here's a little pirate sword to entertain yourself. It's not very dangerous, right? <laughs> you wouldn't do much damage with this sword, would you? But it's fun to have, and you can have one if you like, when we're all done most. This little boy is out playing in the sand one day and he's digging up sand and the pirates come by because they need someone to dig up to bury their, their treasure. So they pick him up and take him on board. Well, it is a good time. He doesn't have to say please. He doesn't say thank you. He can reach across the table. He can shout. He can have lots of fun. He even gets to have a pillow fight before bed. But the catch is, he likes to be tucked in by his mommy and the pirates don't talk. <laughs> Not only that, they won't read him a book to go to bed with. He decides, maybe this pirate life is not for me. He says, I'm leaving. I want to go back home. But he says, well, I said I'd help you bury the treasure. I'll show you a great place to bury the treasure. Where did they bury it? In his backyard. That's right. But now, of course, you older kids, and maybe some of you younger ones, know that real pirates weren't quite as nice as the pirates in those books. And they attacked a lot of ships, and they stole stuff, and when and they didn't give it to them real quick, they'd kill them and take it. One of the fiercest, maybe the fiercest, was Blackbeard. He was called Black because of that beard. And if you look close, you'll see this smoke coming out of his head. What he used to do to look scary was he put some slow-burning fuses into his beard. This is a true story. And when he would be attacking, people would see this crazy guy with smoke coming out of his head. And the idea was they'd surrender quicker, right? And they often did. He finally got killed when Lieutenant Robert Maynard went after him. Maynard would have been dead except for the other men. See, 
Blackbeard drew his sword, Maynard drew their sword, and Blackbeard was so powerful that he came down with that sword, he just split Lieutenant Maynard's sword in two. He had nothing but a stubble. And he's about to kill him when several men came up behind him and stowed their swords through his back. Took about 20 bad sword cuts and five bullets to kill Blackbeard. He finally died. They cut his head off and hung it up to warn other people about being pirates. They threw his body overboard, and the legend says that he was so mean his body swam around that <laughs> ship three times before it sunk. Show me a tree like this. Here's the trouble. A tree in the hole, make a circle, and the hole in the ground, and the green grass grew all around, all around, and the green grass grew all around. Got it? We do the motions in that second part, okay? And we're going to add them on. Once upon a time, there was a very wise and kindly king named King Solomon. You've probably heard of him. At least in most of the stories, he's kind and he's wise. In this one, he's not at all until a little bird called a hoopoe bird sets him straight. Your Majesty, I've been your loyal servant for many years, but I cannot so easily give up my beak to you. I will give you a proposal. I propose that I ask you three riddles. If you can answer all those three riddles, then I will do as you say. If you cannot answer any one of those riddles, then the birds keep their beaks. Well, the birds were amazed at his boldness, but Solomon admired his courage, and really the hoopoe was a favorite of King Solomon, and he was confident that he could answer any riddles that were put to him. And so he said, I accept. Well, here is the first question. Who is it that was never born and will never die? Oh, well, that's easy, said King Solomon. That would be the creator. The creator created the sky and the sea and the land. He created plants and animals, and birds. And birds, he said, yeah. Well, here is your second riddle. What water neither rises from the ground nor falls from the sky? Solomon thought for a moment, and he said, well, that would be a tear, a tear that's shed in sadness. As he looked out at the birds, they looked sad indeed. And he felt just a tinge of sadness himself, and when he reached up to scratch below his eye, he found that his finger was a little wet. The hoopoe was becoming nervous. He had one more riddle to save the birds' beaks. Very well, he said. What is it that is so delicate that can put food in a baby's mouth? but so powerful that it can make holes in wood. King Solomon scratched his head, he wrinkled his forehead a little bit, he looked up, and then he looked down, he said, oh, of course, he said, well, that would be a bird's beak. A bird's beak, he said. But immediately, the satisfaction of guessing that riddle passed, and he felt the cruel irony of what he had just said. Those wonderful beaks, so necessary for their survival. 
He was asking them to surrender. He felt filled with shame and his selfishness and his cruelty. He picked up the cuckoo bird and he looked at it. He said, my friends, I have answered the hoopoe's three riddles, but there is a question that I cannot answer. Why should each of you give up his beak to me? I have no right to those beaks. They are necessary for your survival. He said, my friends, I beg your forgiveness for my cruelty and my insensitivity. Please forgive me. And Hoopoo, he said, I thank you for your courage and your wisdom. You are wiser than I am. And he called for the royal goldsmith and he had him build a royal crown for the hoopoe. And he wears it to this day. And it reminds us that every living thing on the earth has something to teach us about how we live. Long time to be gone. Wanna try? Little bird.